وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد first of all the brothers and sisters I'd like to thank Fosman Center for this opportunity and it is my pleasure alhamdulillah to be with you tonight I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant everyone who worked to on organizing this event today to get reward and blessing inshallah uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Zahid. I'm from Lebanon, and uh, I graduated from uh, Islamic University of Manila and Manawara. I have my bachelor's and uh, master's degrees there. And uh, currently, I'm still doing my PhD in uh, Malay University in Malaysia. Inshallah, I hope it to be finished soon. I ask you, inshallah. Actually, my, my master's degree uh, in Medina was about the Quranic stories. And I studied the Quranic stories from a different, different perspective, uh, which is, does the, or do the stories of the Quran uh, show or indicate for fifth ruling? Like, you know, we read the stories of the Quran, we read about Adam, about Musa, and Isa, and Islam, it's just a story. But uh, my studies were, to see if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicates some fifth ruling in this uh, Quranic stories. Because many of us think that the story is only related to mention some historical thing that happened to the previous uh, prophets. And since there's a problem of the brothers and sisters, I, I found that our scholars and the scholars of this woman, they look at the Quran in a different way. Allah, I, I, there is a lot of ayat that I used to read it even when I was in Medina, when I was at the university. I used to read it, but you don't look at it in the same way that our scholars look at the Quran. From there, subhanAllah, I start being more uh, attached to study the word of Allah subhanahu azza wa jal. And I always give this example of Quran. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the word of Al-Hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Hakim. Al-Hakim means the always. Which means the Quran, Allah azza wa jal will never do or will never say something without a hikmah, without reason. No, nothing. So every single letter in the Quran, it contains hikmah. Allah azza wa jal will never say one word without hikmah behind it. So because of that, the Quran is that studying the Quran will never end. Just like I want you to imagine this room here in front of you. Imagine that every single thing here is made for a reason. Even the distance between the clock and let's say, for example, this table, why it's distant from that wall and, and why the bracket is a few inches and every single thing for one reason, for reason. Do you think that you will have the time to discover the whole reason of this room? You cannot. Exactly the same Quran in the Quran al Karim. Every single word in the Quran al Karim has hikmah or a wisdom behind it. And subhanAllah, after I, 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 I moved to uh, Malaysia and uh, I was asked to, you know, because I'm Arab and I'm originally from Lebanon, and this is my first time in the US, I've been here only for around nine months. Uh, when I was in Malaysia, I was asked to teach uh, Arabic. So subhanAllah, during the, my lesson at the beginning, uh, I started being asked a lot of questions that Allah, even if I'm as native uh, uh, native speaker, it's, I didn't think about it, you know, in the same way when I asked about uh, the, the, this thing. And then subhanAllah, this really motivated me to research more and more and more uh, into the Arabic language. And especially Quranic Arabic. So alhamdulillah, I started an uh, institute in, in, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, it has been uh, launched for almost four years. We focus only on Quranic Arabic. And by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we are working, uh, working on a book, inshallah, that probably soon it's about Quranic Arabic. But this is not the case of Quranic. Uh, the case of subhanAllah, Quranic Quran is so beautiful. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so nice. And the most honorable and the most 
uh, pleasure or enjoyable thing that you might have in this dunya is the time that you spend when you learn the word of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the beauty of the Quran, it's it's uh, it's a lot in the Quran. Inshallah, if in this short session, I will give a brief uh, introduction about the environment and the culture during the revelation of the Quran. Because to understand the Quran, you need to understand the culture and the time when this Quran was revealed. And also, finally, after that, we will look at different uh, aspects of beauty of the Quran and how you can understand this. And at the end, inshallah, I might uh, share with you some of the tips that how you can, inshallah, achieve the beauty of the Quran. So let me say, dear brother, sister, the beauty of the Quran, what comes into your mind? What comes? What, what is the beauty of the Quran in your mind? Anyone know? Hmm. The words? Sorry? Allah's word, Allah's kalam. So, saying that the beauty of the Quran is because Allah's word and Allah's kalam, which is true. This is true. To, 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 to see Ikhwani, the beauty of the Quran, you need to, as I said, we will take a very brief introduction about the time when the Prophet Muhammad was there and when the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad. So Ikhwani, the first audiences of the Quran were the desert dwellers of Arabia. Sahaba and the Arab that were at that time during the Prophet Muhammad. You need to know, Ikhwani, the most thing that Arab at that time was proud of is their language. The language is their life. And poetry is their life. And it is enough to know that Arab at the time of uh, Muhammad Sassan, before that, they used to have a market. It's called Souq Al-Qaf. And where they gathered them here for one month. This Souq, imagine that that Souq, it has a place for their uh, poet. Everyone is sit, and then people around the uh, south from Arabia they go to this spot and then they say their share. And Arabs also they were so attached to the language in a way that sometimes some war war can happen because of Arabic language. And they used to have two types of Arabic. At that time, the way that they speak Arab, they have two types. They have the share, the poem, and they have also what's called another, which is Papaba. So they used to be very eloquent, and they used to make a show off that they are the best people of, they are the best people who speaks Arabic on that on, on, on that time. So the most honorable people at that time are the Shah. Those who say Shah, they are they having the highest status in their uh, community and their culture. So when Arab Ikhwani hear the Quran, they were shocked by its eloquence and listening and amazement. Arab, they were shocked with the Quran. You need to know that when the Quran was revealed to Arab, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the way how it was revealed, Arab, they have no doubt, they have no doubt that this is the word of Allah. They didn't have any doubt that this word it cannot become from a human being, from Muhammad sallallahu not because of this, the scientific proof in the Quran, not because the Prophet is telling them, let's say, the stories of previous prophets. The language itself is so powerful and it's so unique in a way that whenever they heard the Quran, they knew that this Quran it cannot be from a human being, from Muhammad. Because they had it, they, they never hear, they never heard a word like the Quran. So Ikhwani, what make, and, and not only this, you know that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, declared in the Quran that humans would fail to produce a single composition to match its quality. Allah Azza wa Jal, not only he said that this Quran is from Prophet Muhammad, so it's from him, not from the Prophet, but also Allah has a challenge, challenges, challenges until now, anyone who come with a composition similar to the Quran. But all of them, they failed. They were, they were not able to complete the word of Allah subhanahu azza wa jal. 
So that's why it's why the Al Quran is called Marjiza. Marjiza. Anyone over me, Marjiza? Miracle, right? Marjiza, miracle, actually, it is derived from a verb is Ajaza. Ajaza. Ajaza or Ajiza, he was unable to do something. That's why we call in Arabic the old man or old lady, we call him Ajus. Why, why Ajus? Because he's not capable, he's not able, able to do what he used to do when he was young. And Ajaza in Arabic, to make someone or to cause failure to someone else. So the Quran is called Mu'jizah because the Quran failed, called failure for everyone who wants to complete this Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he revealed this Quran in Arabic language and he said Quran in Arabian, يعني Allah saying that I have revealed this Quran in Arabic language. Without any crookedness, without any mistakes, without any fault. So perhaps they will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah, Kitab al-Fussilat ayatuhu Qur'an al-Arabiyya biqawmi yallamun. It is being revealed in Arabic language so that they might know. So Khwani, what makes the Qur'an beautiful? How can we see the beauty of the Qur'an? Uh, and, and as I said, yani now we know Qur'ani that this Qur'an is being revealed to people that they are very proud of their language. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this Qur'an to the legend and you know Qur'ani that Every prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, supported every prophet with what his people are known with. So Allah supported Musa with what it seems to be magic. Why? Because the magic was very known in their community. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported Isa, for example, with uh, medicine and with curing and giving life for them. Why? Because they were known with medicine. And Allah is the judge to support the Prophet with the Arabic language. With the Arabic language, because these people, as I said, they, they, they claim that we are the legend of the Arabic language. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged them. He said, bring one ayah similar to this Quran, and they failed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could challenge them more. And this is one of the beauty of the Quran to challenge him more. Allah is the narrated one story in the Quran, Musa, the story of Musa. Allah narrated it in different versions, the same meaning, using different words, to show them that you are not able to give one ayah, to give one ayah similar to the Quran, but I'm narrating one story in different eloquent, amazing way. So usually, if you see the Quran, you might see the story of Musa being revealed here and there and there, but if you look deep upon it, you must have some more that add more meaning, different than the other story. It's not like fully matched with the previous uh, narration. So what makes Quran beautiful, Ikhwan? Inshallah, I will share with you a few things that make this Quran uh, beautiful. One of them that, like the, uh, the sister mentioned, what makes the Quran beautiful, Ikhwan, is the Quran is the word of Allah. Only knowing that this is the word of Allah, it make it beautiful. So the source of the Quran is one of the reasons that make this Quran beautiful. The Prophet says in the Hadith, Inna Allah jama'a. Inna Allah jama'a, which means Allah is beautiful and Allah loves beauty. But Allah is the Rajal, you can see Allah's and yeah, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves beauty in his creation. SubhanAllah, when you look at the creation, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created things. Sometimes look at the, the some fish, subhanAllah, the, the color that is being designed, every single color, and it's so amazing. The same touch that you see outside, you can see it in the Quran. The same thing, well, there's similarity because this is the word of this creator. So Allah has made this Quran very beautiful and very nice. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal did not make, you can see if one you read Bible and read the Torah, Allah Azza wa Jal added to the Quran thing that it's not in any other uh, scripture. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he's Jameel, because he's beautiful and he Jamal, he made his book in a very amazing, nice way. How we can see this? How we can see the beauty of 
the Quran. The point, the beauty of the beauty of the Quran is we can see it uh, in the Quran in from different uh, uh, aspects. So inshallah, I will uh, summarize some of them, but you know, honestly, it's funny, the, this topic is really huge. The topic, the beauty of the Quran is so huge. There is hundreds of researchers, hundreds of PhD thesis, master's degree is written about this topic. Hundreds, so it's a kind of to collect it in short time, it's it's really uh, difficult. Uh, but subhanAllah, I will share with you some of them, inshallah, with a lot of examples, so we can see uh, some of the beauty of the Quran. Uh, one of them, the Quran, the Quranic style. The style itself in the Quran, the style of the Quran is being revealed in a way very unique and very beautiful. And subhanAllah, this thing, the Quran, you don't really see it when you read Quran here from English translation. You don't see it. Uh, SubhanAllah, this is one of the things that should encourage us to learn the language of the Quran. For example, the, so what I mean by style, the style itself, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala composed the world together and made the ayah, this is what I mean by the style. So the style, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala composed, composed this world, it's beautiful, it's so nice. I'll give you an example, inshallah. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Al-Islamim, Anyone know the translation of this? Anyone knows the meaning of this time? So, so the brother says that this is the book, no doubt in it, and then he's saying guidance for the uh, pious people for those who, have, who fear Allah is the So I would like to share with you some of them, some of the beauty of the Quran from the Arabic perspective. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the Quran by saying, Dharika. Dharika. Anyone know who Dharika? That. Arab use Dharika for far distance. And if something is near, Arab use what? Hada. But from Arabic style of money, Sometimes we use have and Dalika in metaphorical way. So if someone is just sitting next to me and I want to elevate his rank, even he's next to me, so I say Dalika al-Alim, Dalika al-Alim, even though he's just next to me, he's not actually in far distance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is Dalika al-Kitab, is the introduction of the Quran, the book of Allah. Many people, subhanAllah, when they enter Islam, when they understand the, the, the powerful of the introduction, it's very powerful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say hada, but Allah is proud of his word, what he said, dhalika al-kitab. So a lot of ulama are saying that Allah said dhalika to elevate the rank of the Quran. And it is more powerful than saying hada. Had at the time. So this one thing. The other thing that one brother said that there is now no doubt in this Quran. Allah has no general want to express a thing, no doubt in this Quran. What he said, Allah says, La Raiba. La Raiba at one for Arab. This is the most powerful negation. When you say La Raiba, it means there is no single doubt in this Quran. It's free from all type of doubts. So, for example, when, when let's say, uh, uh, Arabi says to someone who only understands the Arabic, that you tell the woman, La Rajula Bil La Rajula Bil For someone who is a native uh, speaker, you say, tell her, not now the Arab know that we can meet in their, in the answer, to be honest, Arab know that we can meet in their language. And a lot of things, subhanAllah, the beauty of the Quran is unfortunately hidden for a lot of Arab. A lot of Arab. Because, subhanAllah, if you, yeah, I, I shared with you the yeah, khutbah today, I mentioned that we don't really appreciate the word of Allah. So a lot of Muslims, unfortunately, they don't look at the Quran as the word of Allah, subhanAllah, as their main concern in this life 
is to take care of this Quran. So when uh, a lady being told La Rajna, Rajna means men, La Rajna in vain, she would have no doubt at all. There's no man at all. So if she's wearing hijab, she might take off Mahala, her hijab and, and, and go in because the style, the union of La Rajna, La Rajna, this uh, style is to negate all type of, let's say, a man in this sentence. So Allah and the said, and then he says, I will say another thing with, with this ayah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Kitab means the book. What is the usage of Al in this context? Al-Kitab. It is not only to say that that is the book. For Allah, when you say, when you see that it doesn't mean only that is the book or that is the or this book, uh, no doubt in it. But if only also it gives the impression, if you look at it from Arabic perspective, that it can it means that is the only thing is that it's worthy to be called kitab, which means other than this is not a kitab. There is nothing other than this book, it is deserved, worthy to be called kitab. And this is our style of speech. So, for example, if I'm sitting now in front of many Muslims, and then I said, "Ana al Ana al Muslim, Ana al Muslim," like this, I use the alif lam. It doesn't mean I'm Muslim. It has another indication that between all the people around me, I'm the one who deserves to be called a Muslim, and other than me, they are not. So, if you say it's very rude to someone says, "Ana al Muslim," in front of other Muslim because like he's trading himself and saying I'm the only one who deserves to be uh, Muslim. So you can see if one this is yeah, some beauty that you can see it in the Quran from the uh, style of uh, the Quran. Another thing uh, some beauty that you see it in the Quran uh, by looking at the pronouns in the style, the Quranic style how Allah Azzawajal changes the pronouns in the Quran. And if you, look, if you read the Quran, sometimes look at the translation, you will see in, in one ayah, sometimes I, we, you, uh, you know, and you know, find just to be, to know that Arabic language, Arabic language, like when you look at the pronouns, we have different category of pronouns. These pronouns in Arabic are categorized in three categories. They look at the gender and we look at the number. Uh, Al Arab, they look at the gender and they look at the number. For example, if I ask you what the meaning of peace be upon you, what do you say? Assalamu alaikum, right? This is wrong. From every perspective, you can't answer you like peace upon you without taking more detail. Like, for example, if I say, How are you? Anyone know what how are you in Arabic? Kaifa? Haluka, right? Yeah. So, you, so if you tell me, I ask him, what you know, how are you intending? Okay, for Haluka. So I went to a lady and I told her, okay, for Haluka, she will be very upset. Why? Because I'm telling, you know, okay, uh, for Haluka, I'm addressing her as a man. How are you? So if I ask a lady, what do you mean, of how are you? She told me, okay, for Haluka. Then I went to a man and I say, okay, for how to keep, he will be also offended because I'm talking to him as woman. So because of that, just to know that in Arabic, the word you, you cannot translate it until you ask, who, who the one that you are talking to? Is he Ahmed, Fatima, two people, more than two mental men, or only ladies? So all our pronouns are category Categorized based on this concept. Also, the verb. The verb, Madalan, one verb in Arabic will show you who is doing it and what is the gender. So, for example, I'll just give an example. For, like we say, uh, do you all know what means, or let's say, do you all know what means, say, can I tell lady, no, you can't. Because this, this saying is only for singular man, only one man. So this is Arabic style, and, and you can see, Afwani, 
Yani we have a plural form like you, we have a plural you in plural form for women and other. And if you are learning this pronoun, it will you know show you some of the beauty of the Quran. I'll just give you an example. Come with it, I mean, we will read a little bit of, from Surah Al Fatiha. So, for Al Fatiha, let's see the beauty of the pronoun and how you can see it, you know, uh, some of my thing in Surah Al Fatiha. Like Allah Azza wa Jalla started Surah Al Fatiha by saying, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Al Rahim, Malik Yawm Al Din. We all know, do you all know the meaning of Alhamdulillah? Like, now look at the context now it's being revealed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Alhamdulillah, the Lord of the Alameen, all praise to Allah Azza wa Jal, the Lord of the universe, uh, the most gracious, the most merciful. Maliki, actually, every single word we can, you know, study in depth, but answer, the, the other said this huge topic, we can't cover everything, but I'll just, inshallah, take uh, whatever, inshallah, we are able to cover. So, Maliki Yawmidi, all of this you are, we are talking about, oh Allah is talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the next ayah after this, after Maliki Yawmidi is what? Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. So you can see Iyaka na'budu, look how the, the context is changed. It's changed from narrating, well, from third person narration talking about Allah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah, and then it is switch directly to dialogue, straight and, and direct conversation. And say, Iyaka na'udu wa Iyaka nasta'in. And look, Ikhwani, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He used Iyaka, He used it in what do you think? You alone in worship. What do you think? You here, is it uh, revealed in? Singular form or plural form? Singular, even though it's money Allah, they use the plural form out of respect sometimes. That when you go to uh, the king or you go to uh, Sultan or someone has high status, in the we don't usually address them in singular form. We don't say, oh, okay, how are you? you know, we use it in plural form to show respect. Okay, That's why all of the like, Salamu Alaikum. It's been used sometimes like a, a way of respect. So Allah can't add up using a singular form. Why? Huh? Is one? It's not about one. It, huh? It's the only God that it has another indication. Huh? Only him you worship. Uh, there is one nice indication that the ulama says, while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in, and you address Allah as a in singular, even though Allah as a talked about himself in the plural form. You know that when Allah as a said, Allah of the Quran, inna nahnu nazalnakum. Indeed, we are the one who uh, sent down the, the dhikr, the Quran. So Allah as a ulama is saying, Allah as a jal, you use singular form here. To show that you don't have any barrier between you and Allah, to shorten the relationship between you and Allah. Imagine if you are the first ayah of the Quran and you're addressing Allah with a plural form, it might bring some fear to your heart and stop you from asking Allah. So Allah says, don't, and this is the Quran, what you will see in the Quran when the Anbiya are talking to Allah. They're talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if he is listening to them. And then they talk it to any one of his friends. And you can see at the beginning of Surah Maryam, it's so amazing, the beginning of Surah Maryam, how Zakaria was talking to his Lord. So Ulama is saying the ka here that we use in singular form to show that there is nothing between you and Allah subhanahu as the wajal. So another thing, this is like you can see from the Quranic style, from the uh, pronoun. If you look at the one, you have Iyaka. Anyone know from Iyaka? Huh? You only. Only you. Sure? Actually, no. Iyaka means you. Iyaka, it only means you. So, what, what the, the meaning of Iyaka now would mean you, we worship. So, from where this only is coming, that you can see it a lot in the translation, only you, from where? 
the odd is coming if I so someone tell you Jazakallah or Khayman, usually how you respond? Iyaka, do you really mean that only you may Allah reward you and other I don't want Allah to reward them? No. So the only is coming to find from changing the order of the sentence. Like the phrase in Arabic, you have different type of phrase. So the phrase is supposed to be a verb, subject, object. Verb, subject, object. If you take the object at the beginning, okay, this is where the only came. The only is coming from changing the order, not because of the iyaka. Iyaka itself, if you put it after na'budu, so I say na'budu iyaka, it means we worship you. You take iyaka at the first, it will give the meaning what? You alone we worship. Well, that's why. So this thing is funny. You you are you are familiar with it because you read it from the translation, you read it from English perspective. But if you look at it from the early perspective, this is from where and yeah, this word is not written. You alone is not written. And like I'll give you an example. Someone told his wife, I love you. What do you mean I love you? In Arabic, anyone know? No? Huh? Yeah, correct. So if someone tells his wife, I love you. If you want to make it more emphasis, be more romantic, he can use this as what? So what do you mean of Iyaki or Hibbu? You Allah and I, I love. Come on, no one, no one has. So inshallah, this is for brother. So you can see the pronouns, understanding the pronouns, and studying the pronouns, it has the Khwani effect on seeing the beauty of the Quran. Like Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Iyaka na'budu, Iyaka na'budu. And he said, Na'budu, what do you have Na'budu? We worship. We worship. Wa Iyaka and Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Nasta'in, which means we ask for help. So I don't know to say why Allah Azza wa Jalla didn't say here, Iyaka na'budu. You alone, I worship. Even though the dua is for the fact that it's for singular, you don't have one. So why Allah Azza wa Jalla didn't say, you alone, I worship. Huh, what do you think? Anyone have? Everyone's the last day. Everyone's the last day. Correct. So th that's what Allah says. Yeah, can I even though you're saying by yourself? Yeah, the ulama, what they say, the ulama say Allah is the Jal didn't say so that you will not have any showing off. Imagine when you say, Iyaka, you alone, I worship. It might bring to your heart that you are doing something no one else is doing it. But when you involve yourself in the congregation, in the jama'ah, it gives the, the, it gives you more being, and it makes you more humble. That it's not something that you are alone, you are uh, doing it. And also, Afwani al ulama they said that this ayah, Iyaka na'budu, Iyaka nasta'in, it is an indication that we need to cooperate among each other when we worship Allah Azza wa Jal. We need to support each other. The way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can't do it alone. You, to, to, to follow the straight path and to be on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala path, you need the support of your brothers, you need the support of your sisters, you need, you know, we need to push our, like, each other. So it's a way that we need all, you know, to be united to, to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala path. So another thing is one, this is all in Surah the Fatiha. And uh, you know, there is one book, uh, it's called Madaraj al Salikim, Fi Iyaka Nahum wa Iyaka Nasta'in. It's a whole book, I think two or three volumes, written by Ibn al Tayyim. It's only about part this ayah. Iyaka Nahum wa Iyaka Nasta'in. That's only about this, and this ayah, Iyaka Nahum wa Iyaka Nasta'in. That's why I said it's really a huge topic of Quran, but it's nice. It's nice. the most honorable thing of Quran, the most enjoyable moment in our life is the time that we spend to learn the word of Allah. And it's funny, it's honor. Whenever Allah is Allah honored us to learn one word of the Quran, Allah is honored. Because of Quran, you know that uh, the wealth and anything related to the dunya 
it, it doesn't work anything to Allah Azza wa Jal. It's not worth anything. And to me, Allah Azza wa Jal given it to everyone. Fasid and Fajr, Mu'min and Kafir. Farun has been the wealthiest uh, person in the, the human history. But the knowledge of money, Allah Azza wa Jal only gives it to whom he knows. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in Hadith, the prophets will not leave behind inheritance wealth. They will not leave behind any dirham, any dinar. But what they leave behind? Knowledge. Knowledge. The prophet of the inheritance of the prophet is the knowledge. The pleasure of the dunya is the knowledge. The risk that you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have it is the knowledge. Allah is the Jah didn't have the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to to ask him to be increased in anything but knowledge. Not for what we do be in knowledge. Yeah, Allah increase me in knowledge. So the next ayah of Quran in Surah Al Fatiha, Allah says also, Ihdina al Sirat al Mustaqim, Ihdina. If you learn Arabic or know Arabic, Ihdina means guide me or guide us. Guide us. So why Allah is telling us, guide us? To, to teach us when you want when you want to make dua, don't be selfish to make dua. Just also make dua for yourself and for the you know brothers uh, around you. Uh, so as I said, it's funny, the beauty of the Quran is so nice. Every single word in the Quran has a wisdom. So Allah Azza wa says, "Inna al-sirat al-mustaqim, sirat al-ladin an'amta alayhim, ghayr al-maghdub alayhim wa la So let's look at the beauty of the Quran in this. Uh, short ayah. So Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Ya Allah, if you may guide us to the Sirat al Mustaqim, to the straight path, then Allah says, The path of those who an'amta. An'amta alayhi, what does it mean, an'amta? Blessed. You blessed, and or you bestowed your favor upon them. And you can see, Ikhwan, when the meaning giving blessing and uh, bestowing ni'mah, over them, Allah Azza wa Jal uses the word anhamta, which is actually in Arabic, uh, it is active form. Anhamta, you, Ya Allah, give ni'ma. But look where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Allah, grant us the path of those that you have, grant them ni'ma. Now the path of those, Allah didn't say, now the path of those, you, you are angry with them. He used it in passive form. So why Allah is merciful and Rahim. And, and in the beginning, and in, and in the Surah of the Fatih, as we said, this is the first Surah of the Quran, Allah is building a good relationship with you. So Allah is shown from that the world that will make you love this God. And make you know, and the, when you read Al-Fatih, the Fatih, Surah of Al-Fatih on its own, you should be attached to this Lord. You should love him. The Arabic style that how it is being constructed from the beginning, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah repeated ar-Rahman ar-Rahim all the time. No time in this surah. So why Allah is doing a very good relationship with, with his ibadah, his children are merciful. So when it comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when it Allah means the fact before you bestowed, and when it comes, a horror. Anger, wrath, Allah is the in passive form. So, Sirat al Ladin and Amta Alayhim, Ghayr al Mahdoub Alayhim, not the path of those who deserve your anger or who have earned your wrath. Allah didn't say that the, the, the path of those you, Allah, uh, you are angry with, with them. Fine, inshallah. Everything is my last one. I will just stop with this throughout the path. How we will move, inshallah, to cover more uh, examples. Another thing is funny is um, yeah, in some of the, some of other things that you can see from uh, in the Quran, and you can see the beauty of the Quran. For example, the, the plural form. Plural form in the Quran, you know that in, in Arabic you have a plural, you have masculine plural, feminine plural. So Muslim and Muslim, this is a feminine plural. If one of the brothers is sitting here, this becomes what? Muslim. 
this becomes new. So the only feminine one is plural feminine in Arabic is when there's only ladies, there's no man in between. So when you see in the Quran, Muslim moon, masculine plural, it means mixed. When you see in the Quran, Muslim moon and Muslim man, it means Allah specifically is talking about the men and women. So this is the feminine plural. Right. Uh, like when you, not a line, uh, but feminine plural in Arabic has other uses. Arab use feminine plural, plural for other reasons. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayat of Siyah, in the fasting verse, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the fasting upon us, then he said, Ayyaman ma'budat. Ayyaman ma'budat. Anyone knows what the Ayyaman ma'budat? Huh? I guess what? Okay. Yes, big days for fasting. I know I'm not big days for fasting. Is this kind big days? And uh, is it a lot or it is a small number of days? What do you think? Why? Not because we know how many days. Huh? <laughs> not because we know, but. But the point is just to show you that the plural in Arabic is used when you want to minimize the number. So if I want to encourage someone to read a book, I want to encourage them to read a book, and then I have a book, a big book of books. Okay? And now I want to embrace them. Uh, so I say, no, this is Warakat. Read this Warakat. I use it one feminine plural. I use a Warakat. I use more of to indicate that this is a small amount of food. So this is what Allah has to encourage us to fast Ramadan. Allah didn't say at the beginning one month. One month is, you know, people may you know, be scared for one month. Allah didn't say 30 days to fast. Allah has to because at the beginning of the if you know the reason of the relation, at the beginning of Siyam, it was not wise. Shah Ramadan, it was not one, it's not optional. Either you fast or you give rest and feed them. But Allah has done that interact is what you know encouraging you to fast. So that's why he used it in feminine uh plural. So this is one of the beauty of the Quran that you can see also. So we mentioned the Quran so far. Uh and we still talk about how to see the beauty of the Quran from uh, Quranic style. So the Quranic style itself, the Quranic, it has uh, beauty. Uh, another thing is one you can see that uh, the letters, al huruf al ajadiyya alphabetic in, in Arabic, it has also effect on the meaning. It will change the meaning and also it will add more meaning and sometimes it will add a really nice meaning. So for example, if I ask you what do you mean of Alhamdulillah? All this. Can can anyone tell me what all is written in, in Alhamdulillah? Is, is there all written? Huh? Al. But Al is not all, huh? <laughs> Very good. Al is the definite. Al in Arabic means the. So when you say Masjid, I want to say the Masjid, I'll say Al Masjid. So, or for example, kitab, a book, I want to say the book, I say al-kitab. But other thing is when you al in Arabic, when it comes with the noun, it will generalize the, the, the noun. So when Allah says al-hamdu, al-hamdu, the all that we, we all know it and we think that it is written, actually it's coming from the word, from the letters al. It's not coming from, there's no written word in this. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have to say that uh, all in Arabic is cool, cool, not if there's because cool also means either a comma. So, I bother inshallah, funny. Uh, so you can see if one is the beauty of the Quran that you can see it sometimes from uh, the, the alphabetic from the huruf al, al -ajadiyat. Another thing is funny, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, you said, ما في السماوات وما في الأرض الملك القدوس العزيز الحكيم يسبح لله means glorify to Allah عز وجل ما في السماوات وما في الأرض what does it mean ما في السماوات وما في الأرض whatever in the heavens and the earth 
Does this area indicate that things and non living things glorify Allah? From where? How do you know that this ayah is an indication to say that the walls, trees, every single thing is glorify Allah as a living? Ma, from the world? Ma, because ma, if one it could be used for living thing as well as non living thing. So if Allah and the wants to address only living thing, what do you man? Because man is good. So you will see in the Quran, some ayat, Allah says, to so if you go to, for example, Tafsir, when they reach this ayah, they say, this ayah is a dream that every single thing do tasbih to Allah and the Rajah. Everything. And when it comes, for example, when Allah is going to say, Whoever in the heaven and the earth on the earth, Allah and the earth use the word man, which is used for uh, living. Another thing, Quran. for example, um, we are looking how sometimes the alphabet in the Quran add more meaning and it could add more beauty. We all know Surah and uh, the story of Yusuf. So, uh, if you know that after uh, the king has the dream, and he sent uh, Yusuf companion in jail to ask Yusuf about the dream. And then Yusuf salam, interpreted in the dream. The king was amazed with the interpretation of Yusuf. And then he asked that person, go and bring Yusuf from the jail. So when, when the messenger of the king went to Yusuf, what Yusuf told him? He refused to go, right? He didn't accept at the beginning until he got his Emissions to show that he's innocent. So he asked him, Go back to your master. And what does it What is I mean? What is the matter of this woman who was cut off or cut their hand? Cut in hand means the word was the word qata'a, it means cut. But did Allah Azza wa says here qata'a? What is it? Qata'a. And even when, at the, in another ayah, you know when the Ra'at al-Aziz, the wife of the minister, she, she brought the ladies, and she gave every one of them a taka, and she gave them a knife, and she went to bed to use a tunnel. فَلَمَّا رَعَيْنَهُ أَكْبَرْنَهُ They glorified Yusuf, and Allah said, وَقَطَّعْنَ أَيْدِيَهُمْ So, what is the difference between قَطَعْنَ and قَطَّعْنَ? Even both of them are cut. Look at the sound. Look at the sound. Continuous. When I say, look at the sound, which one is the sound? قَطَّعْ So, the shadda, it shows that that action, the cutting, takes you know, a period of time. So this ayah indicates that when they saw Yusuf and they are amazed with his good, it's not only they cut their hand, because you might cut your hand means you say someone hurt you. You know, because of his hands and you cut. But because of the yeah, I mean, the scene that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the Quran, as if they saw Yusuf and you know they keep cutting their hand without even uh, realizing this. So this one of the uh, funny, as I said, that can be seen with the uh, proof, yani, uh, letters in the Quran. Another thing, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَرْبِ إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَرْبِ We all know the meaning of أَنزَلْنَاهُ Sometimes of one you see also in the Quran, نَزَّلْنَاهُ Also means what do you know, find Zalna? Anyone else? To reveal or send down, send down, and not Zala, send down. Both of them he send down. And Zala and Nazala. So what, what is the difference between them? Look, Shadda, the Shadda, we call the Shadda the one Nazala. This Shadda, in Arabic, they use it for so many reasons. One of them, the one that I just mentioned, to emphasize the verb. We say continuously to emphasize the action. So, مثلا قطع اللحمة لحمة مين ميت قطع اللحمة بيقطع ميت. We say قطع اللحمة بشاق 
I mean, cut in many pieces. And Kathara in Arabic means broke. I say Kathara Tawila, Kathara Tawila, he broke the table. But when I say Kathara, many pieces. So this is one of the reasons that Arab use the Shatta. And also another reason the Quran to show that the action be done continuously. It takes a period of time. So if you read Inna and Zalnaw, the Layla and Fabid, you will find a you a big clear this idea about uh, the ulama about this time. Is the whole Quran was sent down on Layla al Fabid? Or the beginning of the Quran was sent down on Layla al Fabid? Big fila. Majority of ulama are following what Ibn Abbas says that. And Layla to Qadr, the whole Quran was revealed from Lawh al Mahfur to Sama to Bayt al Izzah. To Bayt al Izzah and the Sama al Jinn, and to the honorable uh, place in the heaven, the world, the Sama al Dunya. This is the majority of the ulama, they say this is what, uh, what it means. But the other ulama, there's a big gap. Anyway, I will not go into the gap, but the reason why they have this disagreement is what? That Allah Azza wa Jalla is Anzala and Kid of Nazala. So, Nazala Qani, Allah Azza wa Jalla, when God to indicate that this Quran took a period of time and its revelation of the Quran was revealed in, in, in many stages, Allah used Nazala. And when Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala wants to indicate or show that this Quran was revealed one time, Allah used the word Anzala. Right. So, when we finish with, uh, I, I adjust some of Quranic style, and you can see the, the beauty of the Quranic style. Uh, another thing you find I will uh, come across is the verb itself. The verb in the Quran, it shows a lot of beauty. And when you see it, when you learn that, say, uh, past tense and verb, present tense, future tense, all right. This tense in, in the Quran is different. It's different than what actually you learn in the grammatical perspective. So, for example, Qala, what is the name of Qala? He said, right? Qala, he said. Qalu, anyone knows? Qalu, they said. In the past tense. All right. Uh, look at this one. Allah Azza wa Jal describing the uh, people of that time in Surah al mulk when they are being thrown in the hellfire, every time they are thrown in the hellfire, Allah says, وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُوا أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا لَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّلِمِ لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُوا أَوْ نَعْقِلُوا قَالُوا مَا مَعْنَا قَالُوا They said, is this in the past tense? Past tense, but the context, Allah is talking about the future. This is, you don't have in other language. You don't have it. So if one Allah is the most of most of the event of year after, most of it is being described in which sense? Past. So if you look at the Quran and you see the event of year after of Yom al Qiyamah, from every perspective, it will end up. You finish the Quran, you will have the feeling subconsciously that you have witnessed, you saw the day of Jannah. And when it's coming on the day of judgment, you will feel like this thing I've seen it, like what they call deja vu. I, I've seen this. But Allah has been just described in a very powerful way. Allah didn't say, they will not say, they will say on the day of judgment. Like, you know, most of translation when they come to this ayah, they translate it too, and they will say, they will say, if only we had been listening or reasoning. We would not be among the companion of the place. But when you look at, look at it from every perspective of Quran, it will, as I said, in the interviews, past tense or future, uh, future tense, and this is very common in the Quran. Very common. So, as I said, most of the ayat of Yom al Qiyamah is being described in the past tense. Uh, another thing is funny, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in, in another ayah, أتى أمر الله فلا تستعجلوا أتى in Arabic means came, he came in the past tense أتى أمر الله فلا تستعجلوا which means don't hasten it 
So if you look at the combination, the command of Allah, which is the command of the day of judgment. In this ayah, the tafsir, the law of ulama, Amr Allah in this ayah refers to the day of judgment. So imagine what Allah is saying, the day of judgment, the day of judgment has arrived. But don't rush it, don't hasten it. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Allah has yeah, said, as I said, look here how they say usually, they uh, translate it to the command of Allah is coming, is coming. But if you look at it from an Arabic perspective, Allah used it in past tense to tell you that yeah, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so close. The day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so close in the way that Allah has not described as it already come, past, lost, finished. So this one of the things is why that you will learn it also. Uh, yeah, you can see the beauty of the Quran from uh, the verb, from the verb. The way how Allah has used the tense also shows you a lot of uh, beauty. Another thing, I don't know if you are, if you studied uh, English, grammar English, you know, terminology, many people, they don't like terminology, but you know, they have active and passive. So when you say, Mathalan, Ahmad read the book, or Ahmad went to the masjid, or this is active because you already mentioned the, the door. And when you say, Mathalan, the book was read, or the door was open, this is passive. You don't show the door, right? Uh, so the passive and active one has a lot of indication, a lot, and a lot of beauty that you can see in the Quran if you are aware of uh, active and that's it. Look, Ikhwani, I will, I will read some ayat. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, kutiba alaykum al-qisaf fi al-taqoom. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, kutiba alaykum al-qisaf fi al-taqoom. Kutiba at what is passive. Which means kutiba to describe, and Allah Azza wa Jalla says, all you believers, believers, the penalties was written. This is our one to describe, Upon your back, in fact, in, in, in that. Then Allah said another ayah, Ya you are the Dina Aram, Kutiba Alekum Siam. The Siam is prescribed and became one upon you. In other ayah, Allah said, Kutiba Alekum Kitab. That Kitab Fatim Dina is being also described upon you. So the common issue between all of these are structured in which form. Passive. And this is why it motivates the ulama, why Allah Azzawajal is using this in passive. So if you look at the meaning, they found that usually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he is describing something upon you that it has burden, it has difficulties, Allah uses one passive form. So that you don't, as I said, this is similar to what has been mentioned at the beginning of Surah Al Fatiha, Allah so Allah doesn't want you to have that feeling that Allah just wants you to have to burden you. But look when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talk about himself or about let's say rahmah and mercy, Allah used look what he said, Kataba ala nafsihi rahma. Kataba rabbukum ala nafsihi rahma. Allah has described upon himself what mercy. But in this context is active of, uh, or passive, active. Yeah, and this ayah, subhanAllah, is active. So, passive and active is one, you know, so what is passive, what is active also, it has effect to face some of the, the beauty in uh, in the Quran. There's only one ayah, actually, in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used kataba in active form, even though it has burden. The ayah is in the context of Bani Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ فِيهَا and the nafs of the nafs of the nafs of the nafs. We prescribe upon them that the nafs of the nafs. Al-Ulama, they say, why Allah using this ayah, use the active form in this ayah? Al-Ulama said, because this ayah is found in the context of challenging. So, when you say, the challenge Allah, and we tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are burdening them uh, because of what they have to do. Uh, what they have done. But, uh, so, the verbs of Wali, uh, it has a beauty in the Quran. The tense has a beauty in the Quran, either past or future, as well as we said, active and 
That's it. another thing that uh, you can see the beauty of the Quran is funny. The order, the order of the ayat, or the order of the surahs, or the order of the word itself. Yani if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use a specific surah in a different order, it has indication. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna safa wal inna Allah starts with what? Safa. That's why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he started the hat, and start, he started start from as safa and he said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I start with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has started with, which is as safa. So the order of one, it has also an indication in the Quran. Uh, for example, if, one, if you look at ayat as siyam fasting, you will see uh, ayat al siyam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to tell you, then in the middle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring another ayat. Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عِنِّي فَعِنِّي قَرِيْهِ وَجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلِيُّ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْتُدُونَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued the ayat or testing. So, during the ayah, إِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عِنِّي فَعِنِّي قَرِيْهِ In the middle of this, it has indication. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about whenever my ayah will ask you Muhammad about me, tell me that I'm all, I am here. I will respond and answer the the dua for everyone who will hear Quran. So I remember mean, he said that uh, the reason why is because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling you that the month of Ramadan is what is the month of dua, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us take the opportunity that when you are in the month of Ramadan, take the opportunity to make a lot of dua to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Uh, so, I don't know, how, how many times do you say that? Five minutes. Five minutes. The, the topic is, is so huge. Uh, but, yeah, I'll just end it, inshallah. And if there is any any question. Uh, also, the Quran is beauty. And this is what most of the people are, uh, yeah, they know it is the beauty of the Quran with the rhyme and with the sound. So many people, subhanAllah, they only see the beauty of the Quran when they listen to it. And this is one of the beauty. But finally, the beauty of the Quran, as we said, in the style, in the order, the words, the words, in the letters, in the every single thing in the Quran is beautiful. And it is enough to know that the Quran is uh, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, and you can see Ikhwani, it's clear that. Uh, and if you want to explore and and uh, enjoy this Quran, it is really recommended Quran that you learn the Arabic, you learn the language of the Quran. So this is the source. You learn the, the Arabic language means that there is no obstacle between you and the Quran. The translators, those who translate it, are human beings. They do their own effort. So, uh, inshallah, Quran. We, we shall try to, uh, we will organize the Islam as I mentioned earlier, I have an uh, institute in, in Malaysia. Uh, I've been teaching, alhamdulillah, for early Arabic for almost four years. And uh, alhamdulillah, as well, with the grace of Allah, that uh, I was able with you know, some, some technique to take people from, especially Malaysian, in Malaysia, that learn Arab from the scratch, they don't know anything about. And uh, until, until Alhamdulillah, they start to understand 60 to 70 percent of what they read without uh, translation. But as the Quran, the learning Quran, learning process, learning the Arabic language is not it, 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 it is not a Quran short time. If you want to learn the Arabic language, you want to learn the Quran, it's a process. I mean, you have to build a relationship between you and the Quran, as if you know someone new. So anyone who tells you that Quran in one month, Quran in 24 hours, and you go, this is the power is not true. Because Quran is building a relationship between you and Allah, you and the world of Allah. You need to know whenever Allah is angry. You need to know whenever Allah is saying something and he's happy. Whenever Allah is pleased with what he's saying. Whenever Allah is serious and is 
starting you. So this all the fun it comes with, you know, with the time. Uh, but but Quran is easy. Honestly, Quran is easy and, and it's not a difficult uh, language. Arabic is easy, it's not a difficult language. But people are funny because they focus more on grammar. They make their process of learning Quran very difficult. And you can see what I mentioned now. I talk about past and, and present and, and, and this tense and the pronoun. Yani, it's not about yani, uh, from grammatical perspective. And this is yani, my approach here. to use whatever you have in grammar to minimize the grammar and go directly to see the beauty of the Quran through the grammar. This is why the Quran is very good. It's not to know. Maybe, maybe some of you have learned or said the earlier, it's not to know Rafah and Nasr, Mansur, Marfur, Majnur, this is Kasra, this is Dhamma. Quran is not about that. It, it's more than this. And it's how to use this in a very minimum you know, time to see it directly from uh, the Quran. So uh, maybe if, if you have one, any, any question for me. So, uh, Yeah, uh, brother asked me about the uh, uh, story of Fir'aun. Fir'aun, when he was threatening his, uh, the magician, he said, La usalli bannakum. La usalli bannakum. This one is not about, uh, it doesn't show any case continuously, but this is Arabic style to emphasize the verb. Emphasize the verb. So, for example, adhabu, adhabu means I go. If I want to emphasize that I will surely go, Al Arab use this time. La adhabanna. La adhabanna. This way to emphasize that I will surely go. And this is used a lot in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La tus alunna. La tus alunna. You will surely be asked and questioned about the Quran and Naeem about the pleasure. Inshallah. Yeah. So, brother, he's just giving. We give the Quran. What is the approach to non-Muslim, for example, in terms of doing da'wah with this Quran? For sure that if they are not Arab, even Arab now, as I said, like they are unfortunately very weak in their language. But you know, if you give it to someone non-Arab, that he will not find the beauty of the Quran. Um, my yeah, my advice or my personal opinion that the Quran fits for every time and every place. And I don't really encourage, yeah, I don't really encourage that we always focus on the scientific proof of the Quran because I've seen a lot of scientific proof. Yeah, I mean, they try to twist it in a way to show that you know this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this Quran, the Quran that Allah repeats is not the science book, it's not an historical book. But what we can do, I mean, we can turn and look at the Quran, look at the justice of the Quran. Uh, look at uh, the strong, for example, yeah, you can do one of it, it's different. Like if you're talking to a Christian, you will, you know, try to go and look at the content of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about uh, Isa, about uh, Jesus, about the prophets. If you're talking to Jews, for example, you talk about different uh, perspectives, if atheist is, is different. But the Quran is full of miracles. I think Allah and one of the all his miracles in the Quran is the, the Islam flow that in the Quran. Islam flow how Allah is in this book covered all the man's aspects. Everything the Quran is covered in this Quran. Everything. The justice from the beginning of the Quran until the end. So if you if you can you know adjust the thing, look how the Quran, the covenant of the Quran, 
adjusting a lot of you know all the moving adjust and the manuals and and you know actually the most important thing in our parallel is to follow the same way how the Prophet has been with his parallel. And the first thing the Prophet was focusing on the parallel is worshiping Allah alone. So you have to adjust the Allah, you know, from this. And I think worshiping Allah alone, the tranquility that you will have, yeah, you, you need to yeah, you need to read the content of uh, the Quran. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Any any questions? Okay. Uh, I just want to make an announcement. Uh, inshallah, we will be having Sheikh come in and uh, we will be teaching a class. So the goal of this class is it's a nine month course, inshallah. Um, and like the chef said, the goal at the end of this course is that by the end of it, uh, we would have understood, inshallah, 60 to 70 percent of the Quran. Uh, this will range, inshallah, from youth all the way to adults, uh, based off the interest level that uh, we have, inshallah. Uh, last, the class should start at the end of August. Uh, we'll have a trial class. Uh, more information will be provided shortly. And then um, based off of that, inshallah, September will be the full time courses, inshallah. Thank you very much, Khwani, for your time. May Allah bless you, time. And uh, as the brother said, that for adults, we'll be focusing on Quranic Arabic. Well, I don't focus on modern Arabic, conversational Arabic. Mostly is how to, you know, understand the Quran. And for the kids, it's more likely, Khwani, it's about conversational. And from there, we try to push them, inshallah, step by step by knowing the meaning of Adqa from their perspective and focusing on uh, commendation. Inshallah, uh, and uh, for this opportunity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all.